you guys so much uh, for joining us this morning. Joshua uh, chapter 7, verse 1. If you got it, somebody shout, I got it. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho, although it looks like A-I, it's actually pronounced A-E. So if you hear me say A-I, forgive me in advance. Um, from Jericho to A-E, which is beside Beth Avon, on the east side of Beth El, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed A-E. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let only about two or three thousand of our men go up and kill A.E. And make not all our people labor. <laughs> they are only a few. So they went up thither of the people, about three thousand men. But they fled from the men of A.E. And the men of A.E. smote them, killed 36 men. For they chased them before the gate, even to Shabarim, and smote them, or smote them in the go going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted like water. And Joshua rent or tore his clothes, fell to the earth before the ark, the presence of God, until the evening time, him and the elders, they grabbed some dust and put it on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, God, wherefore thou and all brought this people over the Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Why would you do this to us? Would to God would we have been content if we just stayed on the other side of the Jordan? Why did you bring us this way? Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs like cowards before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land, they shall hear about it. And when they hear about it, they'll cut off our name from the earth. Then what you going to do about that? Because they cut off our name, they cut off your name too. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get up. Stop laying on your face. Get up from there. Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed. They broke my covenant, which I commanded. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. They have stolen the accursed thing. They have disassembled, dissembled the, the, the accursed thing. And they have put it among their own stuff one more verse verse 12 therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed neither will I be with you anymore I'm so glad at the end of that scripture right there neither will I be with you anymore it's not a period but it's a comma Because a comma then says, except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. You're the best thing uh, going for us. You're the best thing that ever happened to us. You're bad 
all by yourself. You're better than two. Than, uh, than, than, you're better than anything that we can ever imagine. You're the best thing that ever happened to us. Father, speak to us now. We'll forever give your name glory, honor, and praise. Father, we ask you now, God, that you would just have your way. Move by your spirit. Do what you do best, and that's be God. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord um, for just a moment for those of you who are taking notes and you, you have a tendency to take notes. I want to speak to you uh, from the topic today. Um, I can't live like this anymore. I can't live like this. Tell somebody next to you, I can't live like this. Now, I don't know who this is for. Maybe it's just for me, but, uh, you know, all the self-righteous people are going to miss it. But I can't live like this anymore. Mm. <sighs> I can't live like this anymore. God brings you to the end of you. It starts the beginning of you. Tell somebody, I can't live like this. As a matter of fact, the person beside you probably ain't even said nothing. Just tell them, we can't live like this anymore. being enslaved and in captivity for over 400 years against their own will. And after being delivered from the rigorous hands of Pharaoh in the land of Egypt, the reason why God allowed them to pass through the Red Sea, the reason why he allowed them to wander throughout a wilderness for 40 years before they finally figured it out, the reason why God congealed the muddy waters of the Jordan River and allow them to cross over is because it has always been God's will for his people to occupy. That's why the devil could not kill them in Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage. The devil couldn't kill them in Egypt because I heard the Bible say in Exodus that the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. That's why if the devil was smart, if the devil had any sense at all, he would just leave you alone because I just heard God say that he's about to multiply you in every place the devil's been attacking you. Because the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. And so I come to tell you that if the enemy's been attacking your peace, start getting ready for more peace. Mm. If the devil's been attacking your joy, I come to tell you, start getting ready for more joy. And if the devil's been attacking your money, start getting ready to secure the bag because uh, if baby kids were here, they would testify that we don't die, we we 
multiply. Uh, shake somebody's hand like a Polaroid picture and tell them we've been called to occupy. We've been called to occupy. So here now in this text, uh, we see there was a man by the name of Joshua. You know Joshua. Joshua, whose name in the Hebrew tongue now is pronounced Yehoshua, which literally means Jehovah is my salvation. Uh, Joshua was a strategist. Joshua was a man of war. Uh, it was Joshua in whom God would raise up to be the successor of Moses. After the death of Moses. And so here we are in our text where, where Joshua and the children of Israel have not only conquered Jericho, but they are now occupying the land that God promised them. But now they're faced with a new problem. They conquered Jericho. But now they got a whole nother situation they have a problem a problem called AE this was the first problem that Israel and God's people would have to suffer and succumb to after they just got good and settled in their new land this was a picture of what happens, a picture to us as believers of what happens when we sin against God. Well, pastor, what is sin? Sin is anything in your life that creates space or distance between you and God. Anything that creates or separates you between you and God. And the Father. Tell somebody that sin. Joshua wanted to divide Canaan. Oh Lord. Because like I mentioned earlier, Joshua was a strategist. Watch this, Karen. No, don't miss this. Uh, Joshua now, he's in Jericho. He's in Jericho and he wants to go to A.E. And then from A.E., he wants to proceed to Bethel. And then after he goes from A.E. to Bethel, then he wants to go to Gibeon. And then once he leaves Gibeon, he wants to go to Beth Aran, which is located in chapter number 11. In other words, what Joshua wants to do is he wants to conquer the north. He wants to conquer the south. Why? Because there are people in the north and the south who want to stay there but don't want to move. Some of you may say, well, pastor, if, if God allowed them to conquer Jericho, then why bother the people in the north and south? And the truth of the matter is that God didn't just promise them Jericho, he promised them Canaan. See, Jericho was only a piece of Canaan. Jericho was just a city within Canaan. But see, when God has promised you something whole, you'll be a fool to settle for a piece. I feel something pushing me. <laughs> See, you don't have time to settle for a piece of a man when God is trying to send you a home. I wish I had a Baptist church. <laughs> you don't have time to settle for a piece of a house when you need God to send you a whole house because when God promises you rain, you can't settle for the mist. When God promised you a loaf, you can't settle for a slice. For the kingdom of heaven suffereth violent and the violent. Take it by force. Push somebody next to you and tell them you better not settle.
Tell somebody next to you, don't settle for a piece when God is trying to give you a whole. Joshua, Joshua wants to divide the lands so he can conquer the whole land. A brilliant strategy. He wants to divide the land so he can conquer the whole land. Why? Because Jericho sits in the middle of these lands. And if the people who are surrounding Jericho, if the people who are surrounding them uh, should ever unite and join forces, they could overthrow Joshua and the children of Israel, watch this, and eventually push them out of the land that God promised them. So Joshua had to be proactive versus reactive and he had to have a strategy before it happened. See, some of you, you said uh, God's called you to have a business but my question is, what's your strategy? If somebody was to walk up to you today and say, listen, God laid on my heart to fund your business, to fund your dream, I need to know, do you got the blueprint ready in the back of your car right now because you got to learn how to be in oh God you got to learn how to be ready in season and out of season the reason why some things have not happened for us is because we have we are not prepared for what's coming so, tell somebody you need a strategy oh God you you need a strategy I tell people all the time that I mentor that said they've been called to pastor. I said, you need a strategy. <laughs> because if you think pastoring is getting up here just hollering. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. What I'm doing now, this is 10% of what I do. <laughs> tell somebody, you got to have a strategy. <laughs> Joshua had a strategy. This is important to note, Josh, because you would think that since God just allowed them to conquer Jericho, you know the story of Jericho. They walked around the walls of Jericho one time for six days in a row until Joshua tells them on the seventh day uh, to walk around seven times. Uh, your VBS teacher told you they walked around 14 times, but they didn't know. They walked around 13 times. They, they walked around 13 times. For the first six days, they didn't say nothing. But on the seventh day, God told Joshua, tell them to open up their mouth because if they want the walls to come down, they got to learn how to shut shout. Let me tell you something. Shouting is not about your denomination. Shouting is not about your church background. Shouting is not above you. Some of you, the reason why some walls have not come down in your life is because you haven't got out of your comfort zone, opened up your mouth and learned how to shout. Yes, Lord. I'm reminded in the Gospels, in the Gospel of Mark, there was a blind man by the name of Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartholomew, if you will. The Bible said he was a beggar and he heard that Jesus was passing by. And as he was passing by, the scripture says that Bartimaeus got a revelation. Oh, God that he needed to open up his mouth and the reason why he knew to open up his mouth is because as Jesus got closer the more the people begin to tell him to be quiet and so what I may have said even though I'm blind I'm not dumb if y'all telling me to be quiet that means my miracle is in the neighborhood look at somebody next to you real quick and say neighbor I won't apologize.
apologize for my shout. I won't apologize for my holler. As a matter of fact, if you tell me to be quiet, I'll holler even louder because that means my miracle is closer than it's ever been before. Shake somebody's hand like you're going to take it and say, neighbor, holler if you need to. Jesus, the servant of David. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, I'm just desperate for a miracle. Come on, I'm just desperate for a miracle. And the truth of the matter is, I let my last miracle get away from me. Because I was worried about what church folk say about me. But I made God a promise. If he ever come back down my street, I'll Tell somebody I ain't stunning you. I'll be more undignified than this. Let people think you crazy when you holler. Let people think you crazy when you run around the church. Let people think you crazy when you start shouting. If they had any idea of the hell that God brought you through, they'll be shouting too. I don't apologize for my praise. Joshua Joshua had a strategy you would think that since God allowed them to conquer Jericho in the previous chapter you would think that now would be a good time to rest. You know, now would be just a good time to kick off your shoes and just relax. He promised them Canaan, not Jericho. But here's a prime example that just because God blessed you to occupy something it does not mean that Satan doesn't have enemies who are surrounding you. Enemies of your anointing, enemies of your vision, enemies of your peace, enemies of your business, enemies of your creativity who are just waiting for the right moment to attack you. And so Joshua said, I can't get caught slipping. I gotta have a strategy. See, one of the biggest mistakes we make as Christians is that we allow ourselves to get too comfortable after we win. See, because prior to the win, you were exercising, you, you were rehearsing, you were studying, you were praying, you were fasting, you were paying your tithes. But now that God has given you a victory, now that God has blessed you with a win, now that God has blessed you with a job, you now find yourself, watch this, intoxicated by a temporary success. I'm preaching better than you talking. He, he finds himself intoxicated by a temporary victory. But I need you to look at your neighbor dead in the face. Look at him demonstratively. Look at them and say, neighbor, stay on guard. Come on, tell him you got to stay on guard. This is why Peter tells us, Peter tells us to be alert and sober-minded because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And 
so God is saying, don't just pray when things are going bad, but uh, I need you to pray harder when things are going good. Because watch this, uh, everybody's not happy about seeing you conquer your Jericho. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Oh God, people are not always happy to see you blessed. And so because of this, watch this, watch this, Charlie. You, you have to learn how to pray and watch. Come on, you got to know how to dance and discern. You don't hear what I'm saying? Because some of you got people around you right now that's too quiet when you win. Tell somebody, that's not my tribe. You can't be loud in my failures and quiet in my victories. And so Joshua, huh, Tiffany, I'm preaching a wealth too. Joshua uh, had a strategy. It was, it was a good idea. He had a strategy. It was a good one at that. His, his strategy, Deacon Sheely, was to conquer one city at a time to prevent the northern people and the southern people and the coastal people from eventually uniting against him. And so the text says, yes, Lord, that one day, Joshua said, I'll start with A.E. And so, uh, he sends out some spies. And if you're familiar with the life of Moses, you'll see a lot of similarities. Moses found himself with Pharaoh behind him in the south. A Red Sea in front of him in the north. Mountains to the left and to the right now, 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 now Joshua finds himself surrounded by the north, surrounded by the south, and surrounded by the coast. If you're familiar with Moses, you'll know that prior to Jericho, Moses sent spies to Jericho. Now Joshua, now that Moses is dead, his son, his successor is now sending spies This is why it's important that you don't mismanage the process of being taught. <laughs> see, see, you, you don't mismanage your season of being a student. Because the reality is that if Joshua was never a student to Moses, when he was surrounded, he wouldn't have known what to do when he was surrounded himself. And so if you just learn how to humble yourself and just sit down and be taught, it can keep you away from being killed in your future. Maybe God put somebody over you because they've been there before. That's why it's a lie when people say, you can't, you can't teach from nothing if you don't have experience from it. Or you can't, you can't, uh, you can't learn from something that does not have experience. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't have to experience something before I learn when the Bible has given me examples. You, you, if the Bible say don't touch fire because it's hot, why do I need to experience? It's hot. So, he said, I'll start with A.E. He sends out spies. But the Bible says, that when the spies came back to report to Joshua, the spies told Joshua, they said, Joshua, don't send all the men <laughs> in the battle. Uh, let's send about eh, two, three thousand. Not all of them. Just some light. 
AI or AE was small. AE looked weak. I mean, the city itself is only a combination of two letters. It's small. They said, don't send everybody, Joshua. Don't send everybody. Because they are just a few. And so the text says that Joshua sent them out. But the Bible says that when they got there, the men of A.E. were prepared. Although they were few in number, they had the heart of a lion. They said, we don't want to move from here. And the text says that they made Israel flee before them. And they ended up killing 36 of God's people, 36 soldiers. It was such a massacre that the Bible said that the hearts of the people who ran and turned their back, the heart of the army, the heart of the camp, the Bible said their hearts now were melted like water. Meaning that fear had now gripped their heart. And all of their confidence had now been taken. What's interesting about this battle against A.E. What's interesting, watch this, about this text is what's not in the text at all. Lord, help your servant today. Nowhere in Scripture does it ever mention that Joshua sought the Lord before he pursued the battle. See, he sought the Lord in the previous chapter when he was coming up against Jericho. Jericho was a mighty city, but it never said that he sought the Lord for instruction and wisdom concerning A.E. See, back in the day when I used to play basketball, we never seemed to play bad against good teams. We never played bad against I got any, any, any sports fanatics, any athletes in the house? We, 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 we never seemed to play bad against good teams. The energy was there. The focus was there. The adrenaline was there. But every time we seemed to play against a bad team or a less talented team, a not so popular team, a team that everybody expected us to just massacre. It always seems like, Sheena, it was those games that would give us the most trouble. Why? Because we would always make the mistake of underestimating our opponent. Listen, I don't care how small or insignificant you think something may be. I come to tell you, you better seek the Lord on everything and don't move until he speaks. I don't hit nobody. Just because it's an open door, it doesn't mean you're supposed to walk through the door. Just because they're offering you some more money, it doesn't mean that the devil didn't offer you the position. Just because you're single, it does not mean that you're available. I heard Paul say, be anxious for nothing but with all things prayer and supplication the 
Bible says that when Joshua caught wind, Pastor William, he, when he caught wind of what happened, the Bible said he he tore his clothes. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament, any time a person would rent their clothes, or any time a person would tear their clothes, watch this, uh, it was a sign of deep distress. It communicated that one was profoundly troubled. When they took the dirt from the ground, after tearing their clothes, they took the dirt and they put it on their head. It was a sign of grief and humility. Joshua and the elders of Israel had torn clothes and dirt on their head. Joshua lifted up his voice and he began to cry out, Alas, oh God, my Lord, God, how could you let this happen to me? Oh God, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you say, Lord, how? Could you let this happen to me? How, how could you allow me to bury the only person that meant everything to me? How, how could you allow me to go through the molestation? How could you allow me to go through the rape? How could you allow my kid to be taken away from me? How, how, how did this happen? Why did you let me walk down the aisle if you knew it was the worst decision of my life? How could you let this happen? Why would you let me take this job if you knew it was going to be nothing but stress and heartache? Joshua said, how could you let this happen? Did, uh, he said, did you bring us over the Jordan just to be captured by the Amorites, our enemy? Oh, wait a minute, God, I got it. Well, well what will the others, what will people say when they hear that we conquered a fortified city like Jericho only to lose? to a small tribe of people called A.E. He said, should we have just stayed on the other side of the, of, the, of the Jordan? He was crying, he was weeping. And God does something that most of us would frown at. God ignores him. It almost it seems as though God doesn't even have compassion for him. He says, Joshua, he don't say, oh, Joshua, come here. Let me, that's how, that's how we paint God to be. Joshua, come here. It's okay. Let me just hold you. It's okay. Get it out. Let me tell you something. When we call God Abba, Father, y'all not talking. It's not just this fluffy love. I wish I had some single mothers in this room that are, that are say, you have to teach your children tough love. There's something called tough love. And that's what God does here in this text. He, 
He, he, he doesn't give Joshua something that will stroke his ego. God says, get up! Stop crying. Get up from there. Stop blaming everybody else. Get up from there. Stop blaming everybody. Oh God. Stop blaming your trauma for the people you hurt. Get up from there. Wipe your face. No more sob stories to manipulate the hearts of people. You're not the first person who went through adoption. You're not the first person that's been raped. You're not the first person that's been molested. You're not the first person that grew up with a, without a father. You're not the first person that grew up without a mother. Get up! Are you going to let your trauma be your crutch? Joshua, get up. Wipe your face. And get up. This is powerful because we think that prayer is always the answer. If it was, God wouldn't have never told him to get up. Okay. <laughs> see how all the intercessors just shut down? Because, see, what some intercessors and prayer warriors won't admit is that the only reason why they pray is because they're too lazy to take action. We think that prayer is always the answer, but the Bible said that faith without works is dead. Hear me, prayer is not the substitute for action. After you pray, you still got to vote. Oh, come on, after you pray, you still got to march. After you pray, you still got to protest. After you pray, you still got to stand for what's right and stand for what's wrong. After you pray, you got to do something. Get up. As a matter of fact, he was specific in the text. God told him, get up off of your face. Because in this case, prayer is not the answer. God told Joshua, he said, get up. He said, because the reason why, here it is, you and your men lost to A.E., little old A.E. He said, the reason why y'all lost is because, watch this, this, oh God. He says, it's because Israel has sinned against me. He said, for they have stolen and taken the accursed thing and hid it amongst their stuff. He said, that's why the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies and they turned their backs and started running. It's because they were cursed and I can't fight for my people until they destroy the accursed thing. Some of you now may be wondering, 
well, pastor. Oh, God. How, am I boring you? Some of you may be wondering, well, pastor, what was the accursed thing? Well, I'm glad you asked. Prior to this battle, when Joshua and his men had conquered Jericho, God gave them specific instructions. He said, destroy everything. He said, destroy everything but the silver and the gold. He said, that needs to be given to the treasury of the Lord. He said, but nobody takes nothing. Just take the gold and the silver and give that to the treasury of the Lord. Other than that, I need you to destroy everything. Well, during, in the previous chapter, their invasion into Jericho, the Bible says there was a man by the name of Ahan. But because I like music and for the sake of time and so it'd be easier, let me just call him Akon. You, you, oh, uh, locked up. Y'all not saying nothing, <laughs> and won't let me out. So, 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 there was a man by the name of Akon. Watch this. Who decided? He decided to take a costly garment, a costly robe. Mm. And he uh, uh, he took one garment and and he took some silver and some gold. Watch this, Dimitri. Oh, you about to jump out your seat? Uh, he took some silver and gold and he ran back to his tent. And the Bible said, watch this, uh, that he buried what he stole under the ground in his tent. Yes, Lord. And that's typically, watch this, the pattern of sin. He saw it. He wanted it. So he took it. Then he hid it. Don't that sound like Eve in the garden? Don't that sound like Eve in the garden of Eden? She saw it. She wanted it. She took it, gave it to her husband, and when their eyes were open and they realized they were naked, they hid it. You don't hear what I'm saying. See, 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 all sin can be categorized by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. I can't get. That's the pattern of sin. Before I close, I want you to notice a couple things, though, in this text. What caught my attention, Sister Katrina, is this. God said, Israel sinned, for they have taken the accursed thing. This messed me up. This caused me to be in a, a state of uh, complexity. I was discombobulated, if you will. It messed me up because I was like, why would God say Israel sinned and they have taken the accursed thing when this was the result and action of one man's sin? Why would he say they why would he say the nation sinned when it was really the action of one person? Lord have mercy. Why? Because sin, what God is trying to tell us is that sin doesn't just affect you, but it has the power to affect those who are around you. That's why the scripture refers to us as the body of Christ. We, we, are, we are one body but many members. And so if you're my arm and you start acting crazy, you're going to throw off the other members of the body. See, when we sin against God,
God, it doesn't just harm us, but it causes those who are connected to us to suffer as well. Sin can affect your family. Sin can affect your marriage. Sin can affect your business. And sin can even affect your church. Why? Because we are the body. Number two, what God is trying to communicate is that sin doesn't go unnoticed. Oh, Lord. I know nobody preach on sin no more. They, yeah. I ain't going to say nobody, but you know, people don't like to preach on sin no more because sin is not attractive for church growth. But I'd rather be right with God than popular with man. And I come to tell you that sin does not go unnoticed by God. The text says that Achan, Achan took those things that God had forbidden Israel to take. And, 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 and though judgment, watch this, uh, did not come immediately. See, he took it in Jericho, but he didn't suffer until they got to A.E. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, rewind and press play. Okay. Oh, God. He took the things that God had forbidden Israel to take. And though judgment did not come immediately, it came eventually. See, the unfair reality about sin is that sin pays you when it wants to. Oh, God. It may not pay you weekly. It may not pay you bi-weekly. It may not pay you like an educator monthly. But let me tell you something. Sin will pay you oh God some of you say oh no pastor that's the that's the old testament see Jesus paid for our sin and you're right he did but the scripture also tells us in the new testament that for the wages of sin is but the gift of God is eternal life I feel something pushing me now yes Lord see while you may die and still go to heaven sin will speed up the process because watch this sin has a way of aging you yes Lord work your way through here sir have you ever saw someone you went to school with have you ever saw someone in your family, somebody you grew up with, and you knew them from your past, and when you saw them, you were like, oh my God, what happened to them? We're the same age. They look like they should be in a wheelchair. They look like they should be walking with a cane. What happened to them? Because, oh God, because, oh yes Lord, because sin, watch this, doesn't just go unnoticed by God. God, but when you live in sin long enough, it will start being noticeable by people. I feel so, something. Shake somebody's hand like you're going to take it and say, neighbor, sin will eat you up. And the text says that Joshua got up from the ground and he went from tribe to tribe. And uh, until they reached the house of Achan, uh, and Joshua said, uh, Achan, uh, he said, I need you to lift your hands, and uh, he said, I need you to give glory to God. Uh, he said, and tell me what you've done. Uh, and so, Sarah, I was confused here in the text uh, because I wondered why in the world uh, would Joshua tell him to give glory to God? Uh, and then tell him what he's done because this was their way of the legal system when he said give glory to God he was saying put your hand on the Bible and I need you to swear I need you to make an oath because you can't sin and give glory at the same time see real glory will bring you to repentance see real glory will have you say Lord I'm sorry real glory will say it's not 
my mother, it's not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Can I preach like I feel it? Because I feel like preaching. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, I can't live like this. And so the Bible said, fourth gear, let's ride now. The Bible said that Akon confessed. He opened up his mouth and said, Joshua, he said, it was me. I took the Babylonian robe, which was the robe of the king, the king of Jericho. He said, I took that robe. He said, I took some silver and I took some gold. Nobody else has to suffer. It was me. Oh my God. And Joshua said, he said, get your wife. He said, get your grandparents. He said, gather your children. He said, bring all the donkeys and bring all your cattle. Remove all the furniture and take them to the valley of Accor. I feel the Holy Ghost here. And the text says that Joshua looked at Akon and said, Akon, for your sin, the penalty is death. And I wish I had an Americanized happily ever after. But the reality is God's word is not Americanized. Yes, Lord. He couldn't go back on his word because God's in covenant with his word. And he's a man that he shall lie. Oh, yes, Lord. When he sends his word, it shall not come back. It shall not return void. And so God had to carry out what he had to carry out because his covenant is with his word. Let's go higher. And so the people, they grabbed the stones while Akon and his family were down in the valley. They took the stones and they began to throw stones at them. They began one by one to throw stones at the children, stones at the wife, stones at the grandparent. Some of you in here, you're like, why in the world would God do that? Why in the world would God do something? Yes, Lord, so tragic as this. Why in the world would God allow this to happen? Yes, Lord, but the real question is, oh, yeah, oh, yes, Lord. It was one man's sin who killed 36 people. And so God said, I got to repay. I got to I got to vindicate every child that lost their mother, every child that lost their father. I got to vindicate every child that had to go to sleep crying at night. 36 people from Israel were killed. And so to break the balance, to even the thing out, it makes sense. God said, I'm going to kill everybody because of your sin. Let's go higher. Shall I prophesy? I come to tell somebody that's in this room that your sin, your sin can cause your family life. Your sin can cause the life of your business. The sin can cause the life of your church let's go higher yes Lord as a matter of fact can you do me a favor can you just lean over and rock your neighbor then lean back over and say oh neighbor Give three people a high 
high five, tell them I can't live like this. I can't live hiding this stuff in my life no more. I can't live hiding sin. I can't live hiding what I'm struggling with. I can't live like this anymore. Why would God kill him? He confessed. Because confessing after you've been caught. Confessing. Yeah, he could have lied again. But you know what, though? Everybody makes Akon look bad in this text. He sinned. But can I tell you something? At least he died telling the truth. I could imagine Akon saying, I could imagine Akon saying, you know what? stealing I've been hiding I've been creeping I can't live like this anymore I can't live like this so whatever my life thou has taught me to say don't feel good but it is well he said he didn't give them the victory because they had the accursed thing see when you when you have the accursed thing in your life it makes you a curse Sometimes it's not other people. Sometimes God keeps allowing us to bump our head because we refuse to deal with what we're still trying to hide. Can I tell you this? And you still love me afterwards? Because he's telling me the same thing. Your success and your potential will always be limited until you repent from the one thing that's keeping you bound. I don't know what your accursed thing is. Can I tell you something? It's not my business to know. But if I were you, I would bring it to the altar today before God comes to your tent. And turns the searchlight on. It's better just to say, you know what? I can't live like this no more. I struggle with lying. I can't live like this no more. Because the more I lie, the more lies I have to tell to cover up the last lie that I told. And I forgot the last lie that I told. I can't live like this. I can't live sleeping around with everybody anymore. I can't live like this. I can't, I can't live this secret private life of homosexuality. It's like the more I hide it, the more I'm torn. I can't live like this anymore. I can't, I can't be angry at the person that hurt. I can't live like this. 
I'm still stuck in how they did me and they done moved on with their life. I can't live like this. buried Akon after they stoned him and his family alive. They buried, they, they set them ab ablaze. They set them on fire while they were still alive. And they buried Akon and his family and his furniture and his cattle and his legacy under a heap of stones. I said, Lord, why would you have me share this? I can't live like this. He said, you can't. He said, but the reason why I'm having you preach that is because you can't die like this either. There comes a time, now this is for the mature crowd here. There comes a time where you get tired of the hypocrisy. You get tired of proclaiming one thing and living another. I'm not talking to those of us that got struggles. All of us got struggles now. I'm talking about those of you who have said, my struggle is my lifestyle. Listen, I don't have no magic potion to give you. I don't have a holy handkerchief to give you. But if I be a man of God, and I know I am, if I hear from God, and I know I do, the Lord sent me to you today as a mouthpiece of him to let you know that he's given you this space right here to repent of the accursed thing in your life. <sighs> He's given us grace up until this point. He's given us grace. Come on, he's covered us. He's loved us. But we really don't love God if we continue to take advantage of the grace he extended. And God is telling somebody today, I love you enough. I love you enough to get rid of the curse thing. Look what the text says. Sharon is said. God said, no longer will I fight for you until you remove the accursed thing. Some of you are fighting right now by yourself and you blaming the fight on everybody else around you when you still got something hidden in your house. And I'm not just talking about your house, I'm talking about this house. This house. When we sing that song, Build Your Church, it's not talking about the brick and the mortar. It's saying, Lord, build your church. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you something? I know the accursed thing. Looks like you can't live without it. But I come to tell you today that you can't live with it. Are you tired of breaking God's heart? Does it still hurt you to hurt him? Once it starts, it stops hurting you and you no longer feel convicted for the things that used to break his heart, that's a dangerous place to be. I can't live like this anymore. I want to be honest with God be honest I want to be honest if that's you to hear today and you know this word spoke to you today I don't want you to worry about nobody who around you I don't know what your accursed thing is and be honest with you ministers elders can y'all not move on this one because y'all got some accursed things y'all need to put on the altar and we don't need not saying that y'all are cursed all of us got some but I don't want to curse laying hands on curses. All of us got something that we need to repent for. Aren't you tired of 
of scheming? Aren't you tired of being in mess? Aren't you tired of repeating the same cycles over and over again? I don't know about you, but have you ever just looked at yourself and said, I'm tired of me? It wasn't them, it was me. I let them in. It was me. I didn't wait on God. I just went on my own. I had self-confidence. I told the ministers this morning, I said, you're going to the wrong church if you think I'll ever tell you to believe in yourself. God's called me to preach the gospel. He has not called me to be a motivational speaker. I'm not saying you can't have self-confidence. I'm not saying you can't believe in yourself. But I'm going to tell you to believe in Jesus. Because the Bible says in us dwells no good thing. See? See, self-confidence, if you're not careful, it can turn into an idol. I manifest this. No, it used to be God manifested. Self-confidence will end up making you think that you made, you made yourself a God. If there's something in your life, maybe your music hasn't went beyond where it is right now. It's because God loves you too much to expose you to a world, to expose you to a people, only for your accursed thing to be exposed before a nation. I think, listen, you know why you need to bring the cursed thing to the altar? It's because for some of you, this is the smallest you'll ever be. There was always a Monica Lewinsky under the table of Bill Clinton. There was always a Monica Lewinsky under the table when he was the governor at Arkansas. But the devil knew that if he were to expose Bill Clinton as the governor of Arkansas, his scandal would have only impacted the people of Arkansas. So what the devil does is he allows you to think that your sin, you're getting away unnoticed. Let me tell you something. God wants you to be elevated, but the devil do too. <laughs> the devil loves when you get licensed. <laughs> The devil loves for you when you get elevated and promoted on your job. The devil loves for you to get ordained because the higher you go, the more people you can affect. Can I tell you something? I shared with our MIT class this morning. Because of my immaturity, because of my lack of self-control, when I first started this church, I allowed my accursed thing personally to hurt people in my church, to hurt people in my family. It wasn't always the devil. It wasn't always other people. Sometimes it was me. It was me. I wasn't willing to deal with the accursed thing. And then I would be looking around like, Lord, why did this person leave? Why'd this person do this? Because remember, when Israel went into battle, 36 men died because of his sin. How many people have your sin killed? Because don't you, y'all not finna point at me and make me seem like I'm the only person that done hurt people. How many people has your sin hurt and disappointed? Today, all over this place, for those of you that don't have nothing to repent for, you're dismissed. But for those of us who have something in our lives that we said we can't live with no more, whether you want to come to this altar, whatever you feel comfortable with, or stay in your seat, or stand and lift your hands, or kneel before God, I really want you to take advantage of this moment. I can't live like this. I can't live lashing out at people any longer. Y'all can scoot over right here, Kobe, and make room for those people still coming. Y'all fill this middle part up. They still coming. Y'all scoot in. They still coming. They still coming. They still coming. They still coming. I need you to remove this. Lord, if you don't remove this, it's going to kill my future. 
If you don't remove this, it's going to kill my ministry. If you don't remove this, it has the potential to be used as a weapon against my marriage, against my children. I can't live like this anymore. Deal with the part of me that the church folk don't know about. Deal with the part of me that I've shouted over but never repented of. Deal with the part of me that's keeping me away from being faithful to my spouse. God, I need you to deal with my infidelity. Father, I need you to deal with my anger. I need you to deal with my trauma. I need you to deal with me. Father, I'm at this altar this morning. I'm standing in this balcony. I'm sitting in my chair. I'm kneeling before you right now. Because, Lord, I can't live like this. He said, the way of the transgressor is hard. So he said, take my yoke. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And my burden. Ooh. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me and have your way. I see tears at this altar. Somebody said, I'm not, I'm not trying to be popular in church. I want to be right with God. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not.